So NASA had their public meeting about UAPs or unidentified anomalous phenomenon or uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon as well. Uh, it seems like NASA is going to go public with studies on this see if, to see if it's real. NASA is doing the uh, what uh, declassified. They're they're studying declassified documents. Arrow is going to study classified documents, and they're going to correlate their findings to see if well if any of these things are actually anomalous. Have you ever wondered, are we really alone in the universe? NASA held its first public meeting looking into just that question one year after formally launching a study into UFOs, known now as UAPs, or Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena. A panel of experts, including 16 scientists and retired astronaut Scott Kelly, came together to try and explain the mysterious sightings, but so far, the investigators say their work has been limited by a lack of data. A final report is expected by the end of July. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins me now to help bring this story, I apologize in advance for this, back down to Earth. Bill, um, first of all, this name change, why, why don't we get to call them UFOs anymore? Well, you and I can call them UFOs. I think what the government's trying to do is get away from the stigma that's attached to the phrase UFO. You know, when you hear that, you know, you think Roswell, you think E.T., Area 51, all these stories from the 50s. Uh well, you got the, it was kind of the government's fault that there's a stigma with uh, UFOs as they did a lot of misinformation, disinformation and stuff when it came to their various black projects and people thinking they were aliens. Uh, there's really a stigma attached to it. You know, the science community simply doesn't take it seriously, and a lot of people in the public don't take it seriously. So uh, they do want to take it seriously. They do have unexplained phenomenon that, that there's no easy explanation for. Uh, they want to approach it scientifically, and they want to do it without a bias. <laughs> and so the UAP a name they've given it, uh, it's intended to do just that, uh, to, to be more, more objective about this and to get away from that that UFO stigma, I'll call it. And so what have they discovered so far, Bill? Well, just what you said. Uh, the problem is the data. You know, they have about 800 uh, sightings of things over the years that, that kind of defy easy explanation. But the problem is the data is just not good enough to reach a definitive conclusion as to what the objects might be. Um, they did say, however, uh, that there's no definitive evidence anywhere uh, that aliens or extraterrestrial uh, intelligences are involved in any of this, uh, at least not yet. Uh, and the whole point of this panel is to come up with recommendations to NASA for ways to improve data collection, uh, to get more valid sets of data that sh shed more insight into the nature of these things. And that involves everything from, you know, knowing how your camera works, operator error, the weather, lighting. There's all kind of issues that go into muddying up the data that they want to come up with techniques to, to make better. In this process, Bill, I understand that NASA says that there's been some online abuse uh, leveled at, at some of the members of this committee. What's, what's, what's that about? Yeah, you know, that caught me off guard, too. But when you think about it, it kind of makes sense. We live in a very polarized society today, as you well know, covering politics. And when it comes to UFOs, alien intelligences, you know, things like that, uh, there's really very hardcore camps on each side of that question. There are people out there that believe UFOs are absolutely real phenomenon with, you know, E.T. and everything involved in it. And there's others that think that all of these things have rational, normal explanations that don't require it. And so online, you know, when you have... Yeah, I mean, for, for the moment, it's safe to assume that anything that could be a possible uh, aircraft it's man-made because so far that's all we've seen even all the all the times in the past where people thought uh, these objects were alien spacecraft turns out to just be uh, secret projects of the government uh, eventually I mean maybe aliens are coming to earth I mean it Aliens existing on other planets, that is 100% uh, feasible. 
to 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 you know to happen we we got life on earth so there's going to be life somewhere else on the planet but is i mean not on the planet but in the universe but is that life visiting uh earth that's a whole different story you have a hearing like today even while this was going on and if you look at comments you know, some of them are pretty harsh, you know, about, you know, your, you know, you know how that works. Sure, you should see and my so comments, that's what they're Bill. talking about. People, <laughs> I don't look at mine, uh, but but that's really what we're talking about here. It's, 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 you know, there's some very hardcore people on both sides of that equation and they make their, they make their voices known. And does that go back to your original point about the stigma that basically to shake off some of that calcified opinion on either side that was before, because now they're trying to do something serious and scientific. Well, that's right. You know, I was reminded today, there's a scene in, uh, I think it was the movie, uh, you know, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, where, where a commercial airline pilot early in the show, you know, something goes by him. I mean, the audience knows that's obviously a spaceship or something. And the FAA, the control tower calls him and says, you want to report that? And the guy goes, no, I don't want to. And one of the points they made today is they want to get commercial airline pilots, for example, to feel more comfortable reporting incidents like this so that they well, the reason why they're not um, comfortable reporting it because they would always be, yeah, well, again, I guess trying to remove the stigma. Well, though, you know, any airline pilot or military pilot uh, that would report something like that would usually immediately, like, get removed or put on leave from their job and evaluated. Uh, though in other nations, uh, their governments have been more laxed on yeah, their military and stuff reporting uh, UFOs or UAPs like Mexico has been open about it for a long time now. It won't feel like they're going to be ridiculed or embarrassed later. They want to get beyond that so that people feel comfortable reporting what they see because John, clearly if you've seen some of those Navy fighter pilot videos that we've all seen in, in recent years, I mean there's some there are some strange things out there that could use an explanation, and, and they want to get more people to chip in and, and help them figure out what that is. And then very quickly. Uh, the, the small clip that he, that he showed previously, that was actually just uh, planes landing. Uh, the uh, camera was on a platform that was moving, made it look like the lights were moving in a weird fashion. But uh, the planes were actually far farther away than what the lights look like and come to find out yeah it was just planes landing at a runway Lee, what do you anticipate will be in the final report you know, this july that's a good question i think they're going to have some procedures and techniques they hope will improve it one of them they mentioned that's really interesting they point out that the cameras and your cell phones have all sorts of sensors and if you had a custom app for that, you know, you could feed data directly to a central website where location, you know, uh, the, the magnetic field, all kind of things like that, uh, that could feed into that observation and make it more data rich. Uh, yeah, that I was thinking they should, um, like what uh, scientists have done with some other studies and fields, uh, uh, you know, enlist citizen scientists, as they uh, call them, to help collect data and feed that back to uh, groups of people that can then analyze the data and figure out yeah if you have if ufos are actually aliens or what is uh some of these phenomenons that are happening uh, so i think we're going to see some innovative approaches like that to try to improve that data quality that you mentioned at the very top bill harwood at the kennedy space center bill it's always